Tony, how are you? It's been a minute. Amazing. How are you, brother? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I haven't. I mean, I haven't really seen you since Chicago. What's I know nobody has, man. I'm busy as. Why is that? Uh, building my academy. We're about done. Uh, getting everything installed. Uh, making sure everything's uh, safe, efficient, and making sure it's up to my par. And uh, man, just working. I got jits on a couple of days out of the week. I got Muay Thai. I got some Sambo partners that are up. Sambo busy. Partners. Yeah, I haven't sparred since T-Bow. So it's a little bit different now. Uh, so you're still not sparring? No, I'm sparring now. You're sparring now. Why did you re reintroduce it for this camp? Because uh, it was kind of like when you graduate from college, right? And you get a bunch of tools. You have to go out there and actually use them on the field. Hmm. Now I can game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, how's it been getting back into sparring after taking a long time off? Not bad. <laughs> Why did you take the time off from sparring to begin with? I didn't. I was just perfecting my craft, trying to. Okay. Can never get there, man. It's just one of those things that you always find something better to to add on into your footwork and everything else, man. And in the mental process, making sure it's mentally tough, making sure that everybody in the press actually understands that I'm not yeah. around. Yeah. Where'd you find know. these uh, these Sambo guys? Shh, can't tell you. Can't tell me secret. <laughs> but how beneficial has that been? I mean, obviously, you feel like you're getting more familiar. With, with Habib's fighting style? No, absolutely not. He's another opponent. And the one thing that they don't understand is I haven't wrestled in any match except for T-Bow mm -hmm. and for Ramsey Nijem, and I was one for one in three counts. Mm -hmm. I mean, how does it feel coming into this fight at UFC 249 two years later from 2018? It's back in Brooklyn. It's in April again. It's, funny, it's right? the same opponent. Deja vu. Uh, yeah, does, does, is there a sense of that? No, we're in the Matrix. I got this. <laughs> Right, I'm Neo here, brother. I'm ready to take this guy out. He's a dirty Q-tip. I'm gonna clean his ass up right there. I um, two to the stomach, and he owes me 20 push-ups for making the homeless do a bunch of shit out there in New York. You ever forgot about that? Huh? Absolutely not. And then he wants to beat up on a high schooler preparing for state a week before. I strike two. I'm mm -hmm. in California. I hear fighters tell me all the time, "This is just another fight. This is just another fight." I'm treating it like any other fight. Yeah, but I'm not other fighters. You obviously know that. You've seen here. You've been. We've been through the mm -hmm. interviews. You see me bring it to one of the highest points right there to look over some stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's a different kind of, different aspect that I have. I have a varsity mentality. I keep it that way. I've been competing for 30 years mm -hmm. in sports and athletics. So I know a little thing or two about how to warm up. Mm -hmm. And this kid, he's, uh, I'm already midway through camp. When did it start? December. Started in December. Yep. I flew my buddy in over from uh, one of my wrestlers as, uh, from Citadel. Mm -hmm. Really cool dude. Went mm -hmm. over there, didn't get taken down once, probably fastest more than anybody I can wrestle with. Yeah. Three times state champ. Well, you see where I was going with that, though, is like, I, even if you had told me, and you're not, but even if you had told me this is just like any other fight, it can't be. It can't be. Not with the history. Why? Because everybody wants to hype it? Everybody else is going to have the but hype. But it's real hype. It's no, not, it's not, it's not no hype. made up hype. There's no made up hype. Everybody else wants to hype it up. I call it more hype, right? With the M-O-A-R, <laughs> like more hype. Everybody wants to keep <laughs> hyping it up. I said I was going to clean it up. I did. The pictures. Belandi Group has been able to be very, very, very on point. My mm -hmm. homie Sean and my coaches. You got Billy, Eddie, my training partners, Jeremy, Jeremiah. You know, my students, Raul, Vic. Everybody's stepping up. My wife has, like, just been there. My rock, my everything, dude. I'm not playing around. I got sponsors. I'm making money. Monster. I got, you know, sidekick tools. And these, and, uh, P and RDX Sports, these guys, they, they, they believe in me. Mm -hmm. And it's helping. <clears throat> I didn't have the support with a different management, and now I feel like I have a backup and I have a team. This is the first time I have my team here at a press conference. Yeah. So I'm not around, man. This is my this is my crew, and I'm taking care of them. Yeah, not that you haven't before, but you have a very professional approach. But you did mention uh, your wife, and I do wonder, you know, you mentioned her support that you've had, this this long, right, long right, journey, right, this right, long journey right, that you two right. have had together to all reach right. this point, which right. a lot of people would say that this is the biggest pay per view of the year. Absolutely. You know what's it been like, and, and for, for for you two, and how is she supporting you? What is she doing during this camp? Making my food, helping me out, you know, helping me fold clothes. I mean, literally, we're raising a little man. Mm -hmm. So I mean, when I bring him to the academy, it takes teamwork. Mm -hmm. Teamwork makes the dream work, mm -hmm. and this is what we are. We've, we've been here. It's been XT, and then it's XTA. It's different, man. Like I said, it's a varsity mentality. And you have to have it. You have to have the mechanics in the sport with everything. Mm -hmm. If you're not there mentally, how Bert used to say it, if you ain't here, you better be here. And if it ain't here, it better be here. And you got to do it. We have a fight to win. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Tony, um, there have been some fans, some media members. Dana White said it a few times. And I honestly don't think it's a knock towards you. I just think that it's an it's a, it's a acknowledgement of, you know, hey, there's this potential rematch between Habib and Connor out there. There's uh, a big, what Dana big old fight. says, I don't care. Honestly, you don't care. I'm a contractor fighter. I come in here and I'm, I'm dressed like a hitman. Mm -hmm. So I'm out there and Khabib's my target. 
So I'm going to go out there and do my job. I'm going to stop that dude from jumping out of the cage one way or another. Mm -hmm. Why has no one been able to beat this guy through 28 fights? A bunch of The guys that I'll be real, the only person that probably would have won the title would have been Edson Barbosa. Mm -hmm. I fought him hard, man. We prepared very hard and diligent for that guy. Mm -hmm. And I give, I, I take my hat to that dude and I broke him. Mm -hmm. When I do this to fighters like RDA, and nothing against them, but these guys, when they fight me, it's completely different. They're looking at different weight classes. Mm -hmm. and they're looking at Kevin Lee. They're looking, and, I'm, and I'm trying to help them. I'm like, yo, guys, keep your head up. Like, dude, you lose, what happens? You start working on that winning record, you beat 12 wins because you're in the consolation rounds now. Mm -hmm. You know, you're supposed to have like a 5-0 and record with a belt. Nah, man, you got 12 wins in a row. That means you lost one time along the lines. So that's me. Uh, just a couple more for you. If you had your way, do you want Conor McGregor in, in, in Brooklyn watching this fight? Who's that? Conor McGregor. McNuggets? Dublin. A guy McNuggets? I, I believe McNuggets? that you're, you're vaguely familiar nah, with. McNuggets. That's his name like that's his name um nothing against him like i said i shook his hand a long time ago money talks walks man mm -hmm. i mean obviously his got him a lot of money mm -hmm. good for him and good for paradigm they me over with a lot of stuff and a lot of money they owe me some change mm -hmm. i feel but like i'm not gonna go out there i'm not gonna get it from them you know you guys could donate it i feel like if when you by the way it could be both me 200k too why is that so he can donate what, what that was that too. what was that one for ufc 209 and that was uh what was that one for um, I oh, because he said he would pay the right? if you would just, if you would just show up. That yeah, that's right. I'm gonna take it on your ass. Hmm. Tony, what's it gonna feel like to have that belt wrapped around your waist? You've already had that. You actually had that in this. Uh, you've actually had that in this building, and that's what you're calling for right now. How we'll, talking uh, about that other recycled belt? <laughs> Seriously, this is the real. Nobody else has got that except for a few people. But I got it before it could be. Never left. It's always been here. Mm -hmm. We can have more trophies. I got the fighters only trophy. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of medals. I got a lot of cool stuff. But that's for my kid. Mm -hmm. I don't need that. Like honestly, I you really view don't. this as a title defense. Yeah. You do. Nah, man. Like seriously, they hid Khabib's belt in the little the poster, but it just showed just a little bit. And that's cool. So thank you UFC for making it a little bit modest. But next time, throw my belt in there. Okay. Make sure. Okay. All right. Last question. Why are we carrying around a baseball everywhere we go lately? I don't know. I forgot a rubber one. I don't know. Like seriously, like I don't know. I have a when I saw you too. in Chicago, you were you walked ball. in throwing it, throwing a baseball up. I'm an athlete. Yeah. I'm an athlete, yeah. and you got nobody can change that. Yeah. Like I'm being real. I'm throwing fastballs. I got my lane. I'm hitting the speed bag from I don't know how far away. Right, first time you two. Like you have natural athletes that you just go out there and they have fun. And in order to do this sport for a very long time, you have to have fun. You burn yourself out. And I know we're getting close to the seven, eight minute mark because I know my rounds. I think we passed it already. Yeah, no, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, I appreciate it. Sounds really good. looking forward to seeing you in Brooklyn. Thanks, Cheers. Tom. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.